Hey everyone, my name is Jesse. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking about the best books that I read in 2020. And just as a heads up, these are not books that necessarily had to be released in 2020. It's just books that I discovered for the first time in 2020. So I have a lot to talk through. I'm going to try to organize it a little bit by genre and we'll start with fantasy and work our way to just general fiction books. Also, a quick heads up, just in case, before we get started. If you all are wondering why I have some books turned around on my shelves, I have decided that I am turning around all of the un read books on my shelf to give me even more motivation to get to them because I really don't like the way that this looks. So this is helping me totally stop buying new books so that I can just get to the ones that I need to read on my shelf so that I can turn them around and see their pretty spines. Okay, now let's get into the video. Starting with my favorite fantasy books of 2020, the first mention has to go to Lord of the Rings, the classic quintessential fantasy trilogy. I know it's supposed to have been just one book, so I will just refer to it as Lord of the Rings, but this was amazing. I loved it so much, and I'm actually quite surprised that I loved it as much as I did because I read The Hobbit before I read Lord of the Rings, and I wasn't a huge fan of The Hobbit, um, but this one just completely won me over and I think it's just because I loved the characters so so much in this series. I will say Tolkien's writing style is a little bit harder to get into. It definitely takes an adjustment. It's very different than the modern writing styles we get in fantasy but I really enjoyed it and just oh man Sam and Frodo are just the most fantastic friendship that I have read. I love them so much and they're just Oh, so many great moments, so many great characters. I can totally see why this served as such an inspiration and springboard for so many fantasy books to come. And the fact that it packs such a punch in such a short amount of pages is amazing to me. So I can't recommend reading Lord of the Rings enough. The next book that I have to mention are the second and third book in the Winter Night trilogy, and that is going to be The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden and then Winter of the Witch. And I read The Bear and the Nightingale last year and enjoyed it. I thought it was really beautifully written, very atmospheric. I really liked the very fairy tale like setting. It's very Russian inspired. I liked a lot of the folklore elements in it, and I really liked the main character of Vasya. She was such a highlight of that book for me. However, it wasn't my favorite. It, it was just a little bit slower than what I typically enjoy in my books, but when I read The Girl in the Tower, all of that changed. I will say that if you enjoyed The Bear and the Nightingale but it wasn't your favorite, definitely continue on with the series because it reads very differently in the second and third books. It's much more plot driven and while we still get amazing character development, especially from Vasya, I think that the plot just, the stakes are raised so much higher in the second and third book. I love the exploration of Vasya and her magic. I also like some of the relationships that are explored in the rest of the series a lot. So I just ended up falling head over heels for this trilogy. And that beautiful writing, it still is there from the first book. It's, it's there present in the rest of the series as well. I also think that this is a really good place to maybe start reading fantasy if you're not traditionally a fantasy reader because it feels a little bit more grounded in reality with just a little bit of magic tossed in. Also not quite as long as some of the other fantasy series that you get. I actually think that this is a really good starting place for fantasy as well if you've been wanting to read more in that genre. But anyways, I'm so glad that I finished off this trilogy this year. It is so fantastic. It will definitely go down as one of my top fantasy series ever. The next two books that I have to mention are the first and second book in a new fantasy trilogy, and that is going to be Foundry Side and Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett. I fell head over heels in love with this series this year. Oh my goodness. Everything from the world building to the magic system, it, it is this Venetian inspired 
world where our magic system feels a lot like computer coding does, where certain characters have the ability to almost hack into an object's reality and change that reality to make that object think that they should be doing something different. <laughs> so for example, you could hack into wheels of a car and tell those wheels that they should be constantly turning or they're, that they're constantly on a hill. And so the wheels will just move on their own. And it almost like brings these objects to life in a way because our main character has the ability to hear these inanimate objects code. So I thought the magic system in this world was so unique and fantastic. And I just love the whole idea of inanimate objects becoming sentient and having a voice. I think it was so much fun. The humor in these books totally hit for me. I loved it so much. And we have our main character of Sanchia who very much starts off as kind of a street thief type character. She's very much more of a loner and she kind of discovers this magical object that a lot of people are after and kind of pushes her into this larger plot that's taking place. And she has to team up with this band of, they're kind of like outcast characters and they all have to come together and work together and it's their dynamic between each other. I loved so much. I loved the dialogue. Some of these characters are definitely my favorites. Like I love Sanchia as our main character, but I also love characters like Gregor and Orso. I thought that they were just so much fun and none of these characters are necessarily the best people, but they all have to kind of come together to do this really good thing for their society. So they kind of have to to become the good guys in a world where they would otherwise be kind of looked at as the bad guys, which I just, I love everything about this. So this was so much fun. I thought Shorefall did an amazing job of just expanding the magic system, making it even more fun to discover the limits of. And then it also introduced a very villainous type character where you're not really sure who to trust. And I love when books are able to kind of keep you guessing over who the big bad is. Oh, it was so much fun. So I can't recommend this series enough. It totally worked for me. Next best fantasy book that I would like to talk about is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I have a full review of this that I will link down below. If I have full reviews of any of these books, I will link them down below so that you can check out even more thoughts if you want to see them. The Poppy War oh, is so popular and hyped, but it is for such good reason. This is an Asian-inspired fantasy book that is based on real-life events that took place during the Sino-Japanese War, and it very much examines a very specific historical event known as the Rape of Nanking. And even though it is a fantasy world, we can draw so many parallels to our own world from this book. Also covering a period of time that I just am not very aware of and didn't learn in school. So this was something that was very eye-opening to me personally. And that's one of the reasons I loved this book so, so much was because of the importance it placed on knowing about this historical event that took place and knowing more of the details about it that we may not have learned about in school. The other thing that I personally loved about this book that not everyone is going to love was the character of Rin and just the characters in general in this world. I loved the main protagonist of Rin so much who starts off as this war orphan and is being watched over by these guardians who don't necessarily treat her like she's family. She ends up taking this test and passing with flying colors and is admitted to the most prestigious military academy in the country. And from there, her story begins of her kind of training in this academy and then being propelled into war. And I loved examining Rin and seeing some of these wartime consequences really, really affecting her character on a very deep level. I definitely think that this book did such a good job of not necessarily glorifying war and it feeling very real to our characters. 
Anyways, I could go on for a very long time about this book and all the amazing things it does. I will link that review down below if you want to see it, but I can't recommend The Poppy War enough. I personally loved it so much. And of course, the last fantasy book I have to mention is my favorite book of the entire year, and that was Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, which is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive series. Oh my goodness, I loved this entry to the Stormlight Archives so, so much. The character arcs in this book, some of the moments that we had with our characters were just the, the highest of highs and lowest of lows, and I feel like I can't talk about this book much without going into spoilers. I do have a spoiler-free and spoiler review of this book that I will link down below, but oh my goodness, I am so happy to say that this is my favorite book in the series so far, and I just can't wait to see what happens because the ending, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot! Moving into sci-fi, I do have a couple of sci-fi books that I want to make sure to talk about as being some of the best books I read, starting with the Sleeping Giants series. This is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvel and Waking Gods. I am not including the third book in this trilogy because I personally didn't love the third book, but I loved these first two books so, so much. The Themis Files, if you aren't aware, follows the story of this girl who, as a little girl, falls into this big robotic hand. And this kind of serves as the starting point for the rest of her life, where she is dedicated to becoming a scientist and trying to find where the rest of the pieces are to this huge robot that is living underground. And they are dedicated to putting this robot back together, determining where it came from, what it's doing there, why. And it is such a cool story. Oh my god, I love the characters in this book. I especially love the audiobook experience for this book. I thought the different narrators for each of the different characters was so fantastic, and the way that this book is written is almost like you are reading case files and interviews. So hearing it spoken to you rather than reading it physically, I actually think made it even more enjoyable. That writing style tends to lend itself very well to audiobooks, so I ended up just falling in love with how fast-paced and how mysterious these books were. I was constantly trying to figure out the answers to all of these questions, and it kept surprising me again and again, and it was just the stakes were so high, and you were just on the edge of your seat. It was so fantastic, so I can't recommend this trilogy enough. Just keep in mind that the third book wasn't my favorite, but a lot of people do really enjoy it, so I would give the whole trilogy a listen if you are really enjoying it. And the other sci-fi book that I wanted to mention was Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I read Jurassic Park for the first time last year, and I had watched the movie over and over again as a kid. It was one of my favorites growing up. I loved it so much. So it was about time I finally read the book, and I gotta say, it met all of my expectations and even exceeded them. I thought that Michael Crichton's writing style was so fast-paced, so to the point. I loved how much science he introduced to the story, where it really felt like these types of occurrences could actually happen based on the science he included in the book, but it didn't bog down the story or the writing. He only gave you just enough to really immerse you in this world where these things are possible. So I loved Michael Crichton's writing style. I loved all of the characters. I knew I would because I loved Ian Malcolm and Dr. Grant from the movie, but they are so fantastic in the book as well. And then there are a lot of differences from the movie. So if you've watched the movie and you're saying, oh, I don't need to read the book, I've seen the movie, that's not the case. There are a lot of differences between the book and the movie, but I think all of the changes that were made for the movie made sense for it, but I personally just loved, loved all of the choices in the book so much. So, so much action, so much adventure, so many dinosaurs. It was just, it was perfect. So, I, I loved it. 
Moving into some thrillers now that were my favorites, the first being Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. So this is the first time I had read Gone Girl, and even though I had watched the movie, it had been years ago, so I really didn't remember much about the story at all, and I didn't remember any of the twists, really, so it was like I was experiencing the story for the first time when I read this book, and thank goodness that was the case because it was fantastic. I loved this book so much. The writing in this book is so smart and intelligent and clever, and the characters are so, so unlikable, but you just love following them. It's like a love to hate type of relationship with these characters, for sure. They were so fascinating. I think that they were so well written, but they were so unlikable, and I loved it. The twist is just a classic twist. I, I loved it so much. So I'm so glad I finally read Gone Girl. I feel like I really don't want to say any anything about it because if you haven't been exposed, if you haven't been spoiled for the twist in this book, please go read it. It is so good. And read it soon before you get spoiled because once it's spoiled, then it's not probably as enjoyable, but if it's not spoiled for you, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for you to read. The next one I have to talk about is The Whisper Man by Alex North. This was definitely a surprise. I was not expecting to love this book as much as I did. I listened to this one on audio and I thought it was fantastic. There are a lot of horror elements to this. It felt like it wasn't a very traditional thriller. It very much had such creepy visuals and imagery in it. It is about a little boy and his dad. They move to a new town. There is this man known as the Whisper Man who was this serial killer who had been caught and locked up several years prior, but there is apparently a copycat killer on the loose who is also calling himself the Whisper Man, and there's just a lot of really cool things about this book that I love in my thrillers, one being the whole imaginary friend trope and you not knowing whether or not a lot of the kids' experiences in this book are real or not. I love that stuff. And then you also have the parental relationship that I love exploring in these types of books, in thriller horror books in general. I love when we get to see the lengths a parent will go for their child, and that's definitely the case in this book where we're definitely seeing the dad go to extreme lengths to protect their child, and I love that. And then you also have that kind of Silence of the Lambs trope where you have to work with a killer to find a killer, and I love that kind of stuff. So this had so much of what I love in thriller books, and I thought it was actually quite scary. It definitely creeped me out a couple times. So this one I think was a perfect blend of horror and thriller, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who enjoys any of what I just talked about. <laughs> and then the last thriller horror book I have to mention is Nosferatu by Joe Hill. I just read this in December, and oh my goodness, I loved it so much. Nosferatu follows a man named Charlie Manx, who is this serial killer kidnapper who goes around and with his assistant kidnaps kids and takes them to a place called Christmas Land where he eats them <laughs> pretty much. So Nosferatu, if you know what that means in German, you might know kind of the direction of this story. Nosferatu, I think, is a horror book that leans very heavily on the fantasy aspect of horror, which I love. I love when horror goes supernatural. So this, for me, was a perfect horror book. It had a mom and son in it. You guys know I love these parental relationships. It had an awesome protagonist. Vic is a protagonist we follow in two different timelines, one where she's a teenager and one where she's an adult. I loved her in both timelines so, so much. She's very, very flawed, but she is working so, so hard to try and get past her flaws and be the hero of this story and of her own life, and I love that about her so, so much. And then we have Charlie Manx himself, who is such an awesome villain. Oh my goodness, talk about a great horror villain. Charlie Manx is one of my favorites of all time. I loved him. 
I mean, I like love to hate him. <laughs> it was very creepy, but oh my goodness, I love it. And the fact that this takes place in a place called Christmas Land, where we have all these creepy things that are related to Christmas happening, and it just makes it so much fun to read. So I highly recommend checking this one out if you've been wanting to for a while. It was so much fun. Oh my goodness. And then the last two books I have to talk about, one is a fiction and one is a memoir. So talking about the memoir first, that is Between the World and Me by ta Nehisi Coates. This one is a very, very short memoir written by the author in the format of a letter to his son. And it very much explores themes of what it is like growing up as a black man in America today. And it was just so beautifully written and it was so powerful and very eye-opening and you just felt so much for the author and for his story and it was just so beautiful it was so beautifully written it's definitely one that is something to be savored beautiful beautiful book i can't recommend reading this enough and it's very short so you can definitely fit it in with all the other big books in your life and then the last book i have to talk about is a contemporary and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was all over booktube two years ago in 2019, I think is when it was released. And I just had heard so many good things about it and was like, all right, let me check this out. Finally, I got the audiobook for it and I'm so glad I listened to this on audio. This is the story of a fictional rock band, it kind of follows their rise and fall through the 60s. And every character in this book is narrated by a different person in the audiobook, which I think does such a good job of immersing you in this story and the way it's written. It's almost like you're listening to a podcast because it's written like a documentary where all of these characters are being interviewed. And I honestly don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much had I read it physically. I'm sure if I went back and reread it physically, I would still love it because of my initial experience with the book. But because I was listening to it on audio, I just, I felt like I was listening to a real band describe their real experiences. It was crazy how real every one of these characters felt. And I love, love rock from this time period and just all of the drama surrounding the rock band and the different relationships between all of these characters. It was just so compelling. I remember just finding any excuse to listen to my audiobook. I was like, oh, I guess I could clean the house right now. Perfect audiobook time. I was just finding any way to finish this audiobook because I was so enthralled with these characters' stories and just how real they truly felt. And Daisy Jones as a character is awesome. She felt like just the coolest girl, but was so incredibly flawed. And her flaws were on full display. I can definitely see someone either really loving Daisy Jones despite her flaws or really not liking her because of them. But I loved her as a character so much and just exploring the rest of these characters was so much fun. So highly recommend if you like the idea of, of hearing about a fictional rock band. If that sounds intriguing to you, then pick this up. If you're just not interested in that idea, then I don't think that you would like this, but, but I personally loved it and I'm so, so glad I listened to it on audio. So those are my best books of 2020. Did you see any that would make your own list? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. And what was your favorite book that you read in 2020? I would love to know. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, a subscribe, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.